Hi guys, welcome back to Freeze Drying Mama. So today we are going to cover reconstituting salsa and guacamole with salsa mixed in, because that's how I like my guac. Okay, so I kind of have this here so I could show you. Um, I shoved my finger in it when I was pulling it out because that's how I check to see if it's done. Very unscientific. I know lots of people who do like the humidity test and they do like the weight test for grams or whatever. I don't have time for that. I literally shove my finger in it. If it feels warm, it's done. And then I kind of check it. Like, it, does it feel damp? Does it feel whatever? This is finished. I just wanted to show you kind of what my process is. And then I cut some out so I can put it into a bowl so I can show you how to reconstitute it. So I'll be doing all of this and the, this. So this is two of two one quart bags is what I will be splitting that into and I'll be powdering it in the bag when I'm ready. As soon as we're done here, maybe I'll do that. Um, okay. Since I'm, so since I'm reconstituting, and you might see some dirty stuff in the background, like we're right in the middle of our day and the kids haven't had a chance to do the dishes or to clean the kitchen, so bear with me. Like this is what mama does. I do not have time to clean this whole house just for one video, not doing it. So you get to see me in all my craziness. Um, normally when I reconstitute stuff, I use hot water, but because of the items, I've got stuff sticking to me, but because of the items that, I've, that I'm doing, salsa and guac, I don't wanna cook them. And I actually do, when I do my salsas, I do a pico de gallo style so that when it comes back, it's fresher tasting because the other salsa almost takes on like a ketchup consistency when it's reconstituted. So I really, really prefer the pico de gallo when I freeze dry. So, um, and then also, like I said, I mixed up the salsa with the guac because that's how I like it. It's like, it makes it like a dip consistency when it comes back. And it also kind of staves off a little, little bit of that browning that we see in normal guacamole. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do with the pico de gallo. And I don't like it. How do I say this? I don't like it mashed up. So I'm going to add cold water slowly, but surely. And I don't know if my daughter can come in and see this. And it's just going to be slow. And I'm not going to sit here and stir it because I don't want this to get mashed. Like I said, I'm really hesitant to do anything that is going to ruin the integrity of my pico de gallo. Because I even have chips here, people, for me to eat with. Okay. And it's cold water because I like my salsa cold. Do you like your salsa cold? The only way I want my salsa hot is if it's on top of a taco. Okay, see how it's still keeping the integrity of those chunks? And color's coming back very, very pretty. All right, here we go. There we go, you can see that. So there it has a little bit of that freshness still to it. And some of it still has some, I mean, I can hear it. You can hear how some of it's, there we go. Now instead of that papery thin sound that we hear, you can actually hear it sounds like more like a salsa. Okay, this means I gotta try it. Dang it, man. I wasn't gonna do carbs. You're right, there's a reason I'm doing this in the middle of the day when nobody's watching besides my daughter. Ooh. Oh, you wanna try it by? Oh. Oh my goodness. Yes. This is just a standard pico de gallo. I usually buy it from like Super One from a grocery store, the fresh pico de gallo, because I don't have time for that. And how about my daughter try it? So you're gonna hear some smacking. Hopefully you're not hearing her chewing her gum behind the camera. I am having another one because I can. Oh yeah, so good. Isn't that good? Mm. So good. Okay. Now I'm gonna have you come up and look at the guac as we reconstitute it. And I continue to eat the salsa in the background. So come on up. You can hear how it's like a sponge. It's like, yeah. So I'm gonna add cold water to it. Now remember, this is gonna take a little bit longer to absorb because guac is a lot of fats. But we have those salsas in there to help with that. There we go, look at that, look how fast that absorbed. And I don't care if I mix this one up too much. It's guac for crying out loud. We're gonna add just a little bit more here. Ooh, look at that. This stuff right here looks delicious. Just needs to reconstitute a little bit more. These are nice, fun. You can pull these out for a game. Have them ready to go. If you have more people show up than you were planning on, pull out another bag. Okay, you know I've got to try this one. Oh, the chips aren't keto friendly, but the dip is keto friendly. 
So that kind of balances it out, right? My daughter gets to try it, so maybe she should agree with me. Okay, and I don't like guac. Oh, but I love that consistency is amazing. It, it completely holds on to the integrity. Oh, spicy. Did we do a spicy batch and I did it? And I didn't know about it. Oh my gosh. Hot. Hot reconstitution water. Oh crap, that's hot. Wanna try some? <laughs> Don't hold your hand up. You gotta try. I can't. I think I can eat it again. It's too spicy. <laughs> the flavor is really good, but. Whew. Whew. Oh, yeah. It totally stopped me from. Well. I'm going to have to edit that part out. Um, <clears throat> so, two things we learned from this. One, do not let your husband put jalapeno guac without telling you that it's jalapeno guac. Holy metro, that's hot. Then, don't use hot chips, because it combined. Do use cold water, because that helps you as you're reconstituting it. But another thing that we learned is that, oh my goodness, the consistency is amazing. The texture turns out great. Um, I, because I do mix it with salsa, it usually tends to hold off on turning brown. As you can see, I mean, this was you know, in the freezer, this was raw guac before I put in, but because I mixed it with that salsa, the onion, the um, all those mixes, the, the lime juice that goes into, into pico de gallo and salsa actually helped stave off that browning feature that guacamole usually has. It's still spicy. But that texture is something I would definitely serve to a guest, whether it's the end of the world and I'm throwing an end of the world party. I don't know why I would do that, but maybe I would. And if I have chips and then the pico de gallo is delicious or if I just have a Super Bowl game and I've, you know, I had a whole bunch of guacamole stored up because sometimes they put it on sale at the stores, which is phenomenal. So maybe that happened, you know, and I've got a whole bunch of it, put it in the freezer, put it in the freeze dryer and then put it into bags and then just add cold water as I have for people showing up. Um, I do like, I am a keto fan as you probably know, and this is friendly, keto friendly. The chips are not. However, um, something that I would like dipped in guacamole is like cucumber chips, mushrooms, uh, carrots are really good. Not super keto friendly, but I'll eat them. You know, celery is excellent dipped in guacs because guacamole, especially when it's mixed with salsa, has a, an abundance of flavor, including fats and vitamins and nutrients that you need um, in a situation where you might not have access to that stuff normally. So um, definitely put guacamole and salsa pico de gallo into your rotation. Um, put it in your food storage, keep it on hand because you never know when you're going to be craving guac and you just can't get to the store um, or the price is too far out of a range. Like up where we live, avocados don't grow on trees up here. As far as we are concerned, they grow in the, in the grocery stores because we just can't get to them. You can't grow them up here. Not like they have down in the warmer areas. So, um, so definitely food store, put some in your freeze dryer and food store some of these suckers because whew, I'll tell you what, that spice of life makes life interesting. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notifications dingy thing. Dingy thingy. Bell thingy. <laughs> All right. So we checked out guacamole and pico de gallo. Maybe next time we'll hit up some cream corn. I think we've done that. Um, but I would like to try maybe cupcakes. Hostess cupcakes. Who doesn't love those? Or Twinkies. I think those would be fun. And I have a way that we can reconstitute them without having to use um, an air fryer or a rice maker or anything like that. Because remember, everything I try to do is simply to do with a preparedness situation. You can't take your air fryer up with you dirt biking. All right. Thanks for joining the family and welcome to your new addiction. Um, thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later.